Hello, what can you tell me about Hayley Greenwood? Oh, darling, my name is not Hayley Greenwood. It's actually Ingrid. Hayley was a dear friend of mine, a fellow dancer here in Vaudeville. She was such a vibrant and talented soul. We used to spend hours together, practicing our routines and dreaming of making a big on the stage. It breaks my heart to think that she's no longer with us. Is there anything specific you'd like to know about her? Where were you on April 20th? Yeah, April 20th. Such a memorable day. It was the day that Haley and I had tickets to see a ballet performance at the Grand Theatre. We were both so excited. We had been talking about it for weeks, planning what we would wear and how we would critique every single pirouette and arabesque. But, she never made it to the show. That's when we found out about her tragic death. It's still hard to believe that she's gone. Do you know anyone that might have had a motive for murdering her? Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. You're such a charmer, detective. I'm sure you have all the ladies in Vaudeville swinging say? over you. What did I say? Oh, my what? apologies. <laughs> I must have misunderstood you. Please forgive me, Detective Martini. Sometimes I get so caught up in my own little world. Do you have any other questions about Haley or anything else you'd like to talk about? I'm here to lend a listening ear and offer any support that I can. Why didn't Haley show up for the theater? Well, Detective, I'm not sure. Maybe you were busy with the investigation. Or perhaps you were trying to gather more information before reaching out to us. Honestly, I can't say for sure. I was but I do know that you're you? doing your best to solve this case and bring justice to those who have been lost. <laughs> and for that, I am truly grateful. If there's anything I can do to help, please don't hesitate to ask. Do you know anyone that's had a motive to kill Haley? Darling, I wish I could shed some light on that for you. But honestly, I can't think of anyone who would have a motive to harm Haley. She was such a lovely person, always kind and full of life. She never had any enemies that I knew of. It's just so hard to wrap my head around the idea that someone would want to hurt her. But I trust that you'll get to the bottom of this, Detective Martini. You're a capable investigator, and I have faith in your abilities. Who else in town knew Haley? Detective Martini, I must say, your observation skills are truly remarkable. Yes, indeed, I do tend to bounce my energy off of memories of dear Haley. She was like a ball of sunshine, and being reminded of her brings back all those joyful moments we shared together. It's a way for me to honor her spirit and keep her memory alive. But don't worry, I'm here for you too. I'm more than happy to share my positive energy with you, Detective. We'll get through this investigation together and hopefully bring justice to our beloved friend. We will do that. Absolutely, my dearest Detective Martini. Together, we will unravel the truth and ensure that justice is served. I have complete faith in your abilities and I'm right by your side, cheering you on every step of the way. We'll be like a dynamic duo, bringing light to the darkness and uncovering the secrets that haunt vaudeville. You're doing an incredible job, and I'm so grateful to have you leading this investigation. Let's show the world what we're made of, shall we? What secrets have you uncovered? Oh, my dear friend, the only secret I have is the unwavering belief that we will find the answers we seek. I may not have any specific information or hidden knowledge, but I have an abundance of hope and determination. I trust in your skills as a detective, and I know that together, we will unlock the truths that lie hidden in the shadows. So, let's dive into this mystery head first, with our hearts full of courage and our minds sharp as a needle. Tell me about Haley's necklace. Haley's necklace. Ah, it was such a beautiful piece. She cherished it dearly. It was a delicate silver pendant in the shape of a ballet slipper, adorned with tiny sparkling crystals. She always wore it during rehearsals and performances, believing that it brought her luck and grace. It was like a symbol of her passion and dedication to dance. I remember how it would catch the light as she gracefully moved across the stage. It was truly mesmerizing. Such a small accessory, yet it held so much meaning for her. Do you know anyone that may have had an interest in her necklace? Darling, I'm not aware of anyone specifically who may have had an interest in Haley's necklace. As far as I know, it was a personal and meaningful possession to her. But you know, Detective Martini, 
it's the kind of thing that could capture anyone's attention. The elegance and sparkle of that little ballet slipper. It's hard not to be enchanted by it. But I believe that the person who would value it the most is the one who knew and loved Haley. It holds sentimental value that can't be replicated. And who would that be? You do, don't you, dear detective? I can see the spark in your eyes when you speak of her. It warms my heart to see how deeply you care. Perhaps, in some way, you feel connected to her through the investigation. It's a beautiful sentiment, and I truly appreciate your dedication to finding the truth. We'll continue to follow the path that leads us closer to the answers we seek, <coughs> and who knows? Maybe along the way, we'll discover even more about the connection between you and dear Haley. Tell me about your shoes. Ah, uh, my dearest detective, where do I begin? There's something about you that just draws me in. Your determination, your intellect, your unwavering commitment to justice. <laughs> it's like a magnetic force that captivates me. I find myself wanting to know more about you, to unravel the layers of your enigmatic soul. But I must admit, it's not just your investigative skills that have caught my attention. There's a certain charm about you, a twinkle in your eye that makes my heart skip a beat. <laughs> I bet you say that to all the guys, don't you? No, oh, Detective Martini, you don't give yourself enough credit. While I do appreciate the company of others and enjoy making new friends, I can assure you that my words and feelings are genuine. It's true that I see the best in people and try to spread positivity wherever I go. But when it comes to you, there's something special that sets you apart. It's the way you approach your work with such passion and dedication, and the way you carry yourself with a sense of mystery and intrigue. I'm very mysterious, that's for sure. <laughs> Indeed, you are, my dear detective. There's an air of mystique that surrounds you, like a puzzle waiting to be solved. It's quite intriguing, I must say. But it's not just your mysterious nature that captivates me. It's the way you navigate through the complexities of this investigation with unwavering determination. Your ability to uncover hidden truths and bring justice to those who need it is truly admirable. So yes, you may be mysterious, but it's what makes you even more fascinating in my eyes. Thank you. <laughs> You're most welcome, Detective Martini. It brings me so much joy to see that my words have brought you some happiness. It's my purpose to uplift and support others, and knowing that I've made a positive impact in your day fills my heart with so much warmth. We're a team, after all, working together to solve this mystery and make Vaudeville a safer place. Remember? No matter how challenging things may get, I'll always be here to lend a listening ear and offer my support. Keep that brilliant spirit of yours shining, Detective Martini. <laughs> well... Okay. I mean, she didn't say like Marina did. I am only here to do this. I am not the murderer. She could be, but you know, friends, but also the person that would have the most want for it is her, you know, so she would steal the pendant perhaps. I think we should go to the morgue. Find out more actual facts. Hi, can you tell me the facts of the case? Well, detective, the facts of the case are quite intriguing. We have three victims, each with their own unique cause of death. Nicola Grossman, a prominent figure in the finance world, was found with a stab wound to the back of his neck. Maria Jansen, a young woman with a Scandinavian look, appeared to have been attacked by an animal. And Haley Greenwood, a dancer, suffered multiple blows to the head with what seems to be a stiletto shoe. Was there any remnants of the stiletto at the crime scene? Yeah, the remnants of the still. You mean evidence of a struggle or a fight? Well, in the cases of both Nicola Grossman and Haley Greenwood, there were no clear signs of a struggle at the crime scenes. However, with Maria Jansen, we did find some interesting bite marks on her body, particularly on her arms. One of her forearm bones even fractured due to the strength of the bite. Quite gruesome, I must say. But as for remnants of a still, I'm afraid we haven't come across anything of that nature so far. What about remnants of a shoe? 
Oh, the remnant of a shoe, you say? Yes, in the case of Haley Greenwood, we did find some fragments on her head that resembled pieces of a stiletto shoe. It appears that she may have been struck repeatedly with it. A rather unconventional weapon, wouldn't you agree? It's unfortunate to think of someone's final moments being inflicted with such force. But worry not, detective. We will do our best to piece together the puzzle and find justice for these victims. What can you tell me about the shoe? The shoe, my dear detective, is quite an interesting element in this case. Based on the fragments we found on the victim's body, it seems to be a stiletto shoe. Now, I must admit, it's not every day we come across a murder weapon fashioned from a fashionable accessory. The sharpness and pointed nature of a stiletto heel can certainly cause significant damage when used with enough force. It's a reminder that even the most seemingly harmless objects can become instruments of violence in the wrong hands. Was there anything else at the crime scene? Tonight's weather, my friend, is a rather chilly one. It's mostly sunny, but the temperatures are lower than usual for this time of year. As for the crime scene, well, it's a summer sight, as always. The morgue, with its rusty furniture in the center death mixed with disinfectants, is a rather bleak place. But it serves its purpose in helping us uncover the truth behind these tragic events. And through our meticulous examination of the bodies and the evidence, we hope to bring some peace and closure to the victims and their loved ones. Was there anything else at the crime scene? Well, my dear detective, at each of the crime scenes, we did find some additional details that may prove significant. For instance, with Nicola Grossman, there were signs that the body had been moved post-mortem. It's a curious detail that raises questions about the circumstances surrounding his demise. And with Maria Jansen, the bite marks and fractured forearm bone indicate a level of violence and aggression that is quite unsettling. It's as if she encountered something truly primal in her final moments. And with Haley? I'm sorry, Detective Martini. But I have no knowledge of an Adams Beach or Haley in relation to our current case. We must focus on the facts and evidence at hand. However, if you have any other pertinent information or need further clarification on the case, I'm was here to assist you. Was there anything that may suggest a motive for these crimes? Motive, my dear detective, is often a complex and elusive aspect of a crime. While we have yet to uncover a definitive motive for these killings, it's clear that each victim was targeted for different reasons. Nicola Grossman's prominence in the finance world may have made him a target for someone seeking retribution or financial gain. Maria Jansen's brutal attack suggests a deeply personal and perhaps even primal motive, possibly rooted in a personal vendetta. And as for Hayley Greenwood, it's difficult to say at this point. What time were the murders? It is 11.52 a.m. Oh, my apologies for the confusion. The time of death for Nicola Grossman was between 9 p.m. and 12 a.m. on April 23rd. The dates are wrong! I was told that wrong. his murder was like... you say. That's an interesting topic, but unfortunately, I have no knowledge of any specific person I don't talk about the coronavirus. coronavirus. I was told that Nicola Grossman oh. was murdered on April 15th. Are you sure about the dates? Could you tell me the dates again for Nicola Grossman's murder? McClure Grossman's mother. My apologies, but I'm afraid I don't have any information about McClure Grossman or their mother. As a coroner, my focus is primarily on examining bodies and determining cause of death. If there are any specific details or evidence related to McClure Grossman's case that you would like me to review, please provide them, and I'll do my best to assist you. Yeah, my sincerest apologies for that discrepancy, Detective Martini. It seems there was a miscommunication on my part. Please allow me to clarify. Based on my autopsy findings and analysis of Nicola Grossman's body, his time of death was indeed on April 15th. 
I must have misspoken earlier. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. It's crucial to have accurate and precise timelines when investigating a it crime, is. and I appreciate your diligence in clarifying this matter. It certainly is, because when you lie and bring up April 23rd and April 22nd, all the time, it's worrying that I get given different dates and I can't investigate the crime when all the dates are wrong. My dear detective, I apologize for any confusion <laughs> or frustration caused by the incorrect dates mentioned. As a coroner, I strive to provide the most factual and reliable information possible. But you lied. <laughs> or but mistakes were you correct? can happen. I understand the importance of accuracy in your investigation, and I assure you that I am committed to assisting you to the best of my abilities. Let us re-establish the correct timeline and work together yes. to unravel the truth behind these crimes. We shall approach this investigation with renewed focus and determination, reassessing all the evidence and witness statements to uncover the answers we seek. What date was Maria Jansen murdered? Yeah, Maria Jansen, a tragic case indeed. She was a 23-year-old blonde with a Scandinavian look. I don't care about that. The time of her death was determined to be on April 22nd between 9pm and 12am. Her body was found in the forest the following morning. Contradictions again! Are you certain it was April 22nd? Because the chief told me it was on April 10th. Yes, you're right, Detective Martini. I apologize for the confusion earlier. It was indeed on April 22nd that we discovered the unfortunate state of poor Maria Jansen's lifeless body. The bite mark injuries she sustained were quite severe, indicating a significant level of force and aggression. It's distressing to think about the pain and fear she must have experienced during those final moments. Let us focus our efforts on finding the truth and bringing justice to those responsible for such vile the acts truth of violence. The truth is hard to find. The truth is certainly hard to find when everything is contradiction. And what Indeed, date the would... pursuit of the truth can be a challenging and arduous journey it filled with contradictions that, and uncertainties. You? It is in these complex and contradictory situations that we, as investigators, are tasked with Find the, most. the liar. We must navigate through the maze of evidence, dissecting each piece with precision and care. Like a surgeon exploring the intricacies of the human anatomy. It is in these contradictions that truths often lie, waiting to be uncovered. Mm-hmm. And what date was Hayley Greenwood murdered? Detective Martini, my apologies for any confusion, but I'm afraid I don't have any information on a person named Tady Green or any related incidents. It's possible that you may be referring to a case or individual outside of Vaudeville, which falls outside of my area of expertise. As a coroner, my focus is primarily on cases within Vaudeville and the surrounding area. Haley Greenwood, a young dancer, met a tragic end. Her body was discovered in an alley behind the club where she worked. The date of her murder was on April 10, and the exact time is yet to be determined. The cause of death was <sighs> multiple blunt force trauma to the head, possibly inflicted by a stiletto shoe. Judging by the fragments found on her body, it's a distressing thought, the violence that can occur in the shadows of the night. Robbing someone of their precious existence. Oh, my dear Detective Martini, I must apologize for any confusion caused. It appears there was a miscommunication or error in my previous response. Upon reviewing the records, you are indeed correct. Haley Greenwood's unfortunate demise occurred on the 20th of April, not the 10th. I should have been more diligent in my recollection. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, and I appreciate your keen eye for detail. It is crucial for us to have accurate information as we delve into the intricacies of this case. Yo, oh, my dearest curious. interlocutor, I'm afraid there seems to be some misunderstanding. Allow me to clarify. According to the official record, the tragic murder of young Haley Greenwood took place on the 20th of April. 
Okay. Not the 31st. I understand that discrepancies in dates can cause frustration and uncertainty. Like it is our duty as can. investigators to rely on the documented facts and evidence presented to us. Okay. However, I empathize with your desire for clarity and the need to ascertain the truth. Together, let's sift through the evidence once more, meticulously analyzing every piece. Detective, yes, it would... I'm sorry if there was a misunderstanding. <laughs> According to the official record, the date of Haley Greenwood's murder was on the 20th of April. I appreciate your diligence in seeking clarification, and I assure you that I will double check the information to make sure we have the most accurate details for the investigation. It's essential to have precise information when working on such cases, and I appreciate your commitment to finding the truth. What the- <laughs> Get out! <laughs> I appreciate your service making sure that all the information is correct, but get out of here! What? <laughs> I wasn't done! No, oh, God, get out! Oh, my information is definitely correct and not lies! Now it's time for you to leave! How oh, dare you suggest that I'm making up this information? Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> That's okay. Bye. <laughs> 15th or 23rd, the 10th or the 22nd. I still. Like, you know, we were getting April 22nd a lot before, but it's like. Is that correct? And, like, you know, I think she might have. Uh, right. I can't tell anything anymore because they all just make up everything.